Hello, we are the Artemis team, and we are excited to be presenting to you this afternoon. During our research, we looked into the Artemis spaceflight program, which is designed to return humanity back to the moon and live on its surface long term in order to apply our newly found information and research to the larger journey Mars. After overlooking the previous Apollo missions and the Artemis 1 through 5 missions, we developed a proposal for the Artemis 6 mission. This includes all aspects of an Artemis mission. That'll be the Orion and SLS rocket systems to get to the moon and the gateway module. The gateway module that'll have the inhabitable systems and modules for the crew and the landing site, which will be where the science experiments and research are conducted. Let's get started by introducing the Artemis team members. Hello, my name is Alan Garcia and I'm from Brownsville, Texas. I will be a junior this year. Hello, my name is Diego Loa. I'm from Los Osos, Texas, and I will be a rising junior. Hello, my name is Sebastian Centeno, and I am from Brownsville, Texas. Hello, everyone. I'm Carlos Zambrano, and I'm from Brownsville, Texas. Hello, my name is Daniel Trujillo, and I am from Brownsville, and I will be a junior this year. Hello, my name is Diego Pruneda, and I am from Brownsville, Texas. Hello, my name is Jacqueline Peña, and I'm from Brownsville, Texas. My name is Ignacio Duran. I live in Los Osos, Texas, and I am going to be a junior this year. Hello, my name is Christopher Reynolds, and I'm from Los Osos, Texas. The timeline for the Artemis 6 mission looks something like this. We expect the mission to begin in the year 2029 and launch during the month of March. The launch of the SLS will mark the start towards the Lunar Gateway. Once this has been reached, the astronauts will deploy two additional modules to the Lunar Gateway, the Greenhouse and the Bedroom Module, which we will explain later. Once this is done, the landing crew will take the lunar lander towards the chosen landing spot and begin a two-week period of deploying lunar experiments and conducting science. Once this is done, the astronauts will take the lunar lander back towards the lunar gateway and begin a two-month period of analyzing the data they've collected and conducting further experiments on the lunar gateway. Finally, the astronauts will make the return journey back towards Earth and conclude the mission sometime during the month of June. Our launch slash landing crew will consist of a test pilot with an aerospace background, Jasmine Mowgli, a geologist, Jessica Watkins, and a naval aviator with STEM basics, Scott Tingle. Now, our gateway crew, however, will have been there prior to the Artemis 6 mission, establishing a crew rotation among the rest of the Artemis missions to come. And the gateway crew will consist of a medic with a PhD, Johnny Kim, an IT manager with STEM basics, Warren Hoberg, and a Bostonist astronaut, Kajal Lindgren. The Artemis 6 will use several key space vehicles to conduct its mission, this being the SLS rocket, the Lunar Gateway, and the Orion crew module. The SLS rocket used for the mission will be an upgraded version of the SLS-1, called the SLS Block 1B configuration. This rocket will use four RS-25 liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen fuel rocket engines. It will also use two solid rocket boosters as part of its core stage. Altogether, they will produce 8.9 million pounds of thrust. Its second stage will use three additional RL-10 engines for a total of four, each producing 24,000 340 pounds of thrust. This would allow the SLS Block 1B configuration to carry 38 tons of payload to the moon, 40% more than the SLS-1 module. After a several day journey on the crew module, it will then dock with the Lunar Gateway. The Lunar Gateway itself will serve as a communication hub, laboratory, and temporary habitat for the astronauts staying on board. From here, the landing crew would take the lunar lander towards the chosen landing spot. My partner and I worked on the architecture environment and living off of the gateway. We try to make life on the gateway as comfortable and as safe as possible. My partner worked on the sleeping quarters for the astronauts and the greenhouse. I worked on the panels and coverings for the walls. Safety systems present in this room are fire alarms, radiative detectors, camera systems, ventilation, and comms. The intent for these systems being present is to ensure that if an emergency were to arise, there would be some way of identification of the situation, a viable way of getting contact for assistance, and a possible solution to this emergency. One issue while on the gateway is food supplies. The reason being is that when you restock up on food supplies, it takes two to four days before the food restocks and reaches the gateway. Well, on the travel to the gateway, the shelf life of the food will drop within that time frame. An innovative way to prevent having to resupply and the life of the food from dropping is using the greenhouse module. Greenhouse will be managed and can be used for studies by the botanist. Going off what Ignacio said, there are going to be two modules added into the gateway before the mission begins. 
two modules that will be added are a bedroom and greenhouse. The main focus in the living quarters are to make it as comfortable as possible for the astronauts and the gateway. Most astronauts don't have the luxury of having enough of a cubicle space for sleep when in orbit. Bedroom module will provide a place to sleep for long periods of time with an ample amount of space ensuring safety and comfortability. The safety and comfortability will be possible due to the multi-layer that is laid across the entirety of the room, including the bed. Giving a designated place for all crew members to meditate and sleep will help to improve mental, physical, and social health. The module has a total of six beds to maintain up to six crew members at a time. Now to go further into the parameter of the bed module, the bed, mo bed module interior will be composed of a multi-layer fabric. The fabric will be consist of the, of the following. Uh, Griswold Flame Safe Neutral Rubber Param Paran 4701 dash 30 uh, polyurethane, Visco BF 1000 extra soft silicon foam, and synthetic Visco elastic urethane polymer. The purpose of each of these materials is to make a safe and comfortable cushion to sleep on and, in, and impact into. The flame safe na natural rubber is, to, is a layer of purposefully is purposefully implemented to prevent outside fires harming the crew inside the bedroom module. The industrial polyurethane is a fill layer to take a load of force from the collision into the wall. Visco BF 1000, extra soft silicone foam, and a synthetic visco elastic urethane polymer are upper layers to make the padding a suitable mattress for the bed. The greenhouse module will be made up of transparent fused silica and, bio and borosilicate glass panels and double pane tempered glass vacuum sealed together with a film of polycarbonated glass in the middle of the vacuum. Transparent fused silica and borosilicate glass will be covered with a fine layer of filament or and or plaster of clear fiberglass to prevent radiation from the sun, degrading the fused silica and borosilicate glass. Fiberglass has been proven to prevent from radiation from the sun affecting the surface of glass. If one of the three panels breaks, there would be no chain reaction with all the panels of glass to break, and the pressure of the gateway would not change. On the outside of the greenhouse, there are, two, there are steel bars to hold different sections of glass panels. The same gray tubing allows for attaching covers to hold onto the greenhouse. In certain times of the year, a cover would be developed to enclose the gate greenhouse for a, for a particular reason, to not harm the plants from overheating or accumulating too much sunlight. Dark color rods in the interior is a stainless steel pipe countertop that is used to pump nitrogen at different temperatures, if need be, around the glass panels when needed to cool or heat the glass. The same countertop can be used to grow plants above or on. The additional materials will be needed to complete the greenhouse, such as tables or cubbies. The landing site. The Shackleton Degolosh Ridge is located on the south pole of the moon in between the Shackleton and the Degolosh crater. The ridge line is roughly 14 kilometers long and will uh, is, has a relatively flat view, which will allow astronauts to get a perfect line of sight into the crater. Landing on the south pole of the moon will give astronauts access to volatiles such as ice water, solar energy, and communication with mission control. The ridge, will uh, the ridge contains blocks ejected by the Shackleton impact event that could reveal regional lithology, the age of Shackleton, and the south pole Atkin Basin, making them primary targets for geological exploration. This is a brief introduction for a scientific experiment topic. The main reason for this inclusion of scientific experiments is that we want to explore and grasp a better understanding of geological and biological conditions that the moon has for building a base and further research in the moon in the following years. For Artemis, we want to do a science as a priority to expand mankind's knowledge of space. So we want to take advantage of the many Artemis missions to study the moon and in the future Mars for a safer and knowledge expanding of the universe around us. We wanted to have at least one scientific experiment for biological and geological experiments. So for a biological aspect, we choose the Lunar Explorer instrument for space biology application, or LEA for short. This experiment is about finding the effects of the lunar surface on yeast, which can be expanded upon using bacteria and human cells to understand how living organisms react to lunar surface conditions. For the geological aspect, we choose the terrestrial laser scanning to create a geographic map of the moon and later in the future, the Mars that can allow astronauts to view the, the topographic of about 200 meters or 219 yards around them. And to go along with this experiment, we choose the handle x-ray for some amount 
spectrometer to scan rocks and soil samples to find their composition. Another experiment that is part of the geological aspect of the instrument, the heat flow experiment, or FEE for short, is an experiment that will be conducted to find how much heat is lost from the interior of the moon that is being released from the core of the moon and continuing the research of finding the overall heat flow rate of the entire moon for an updated understanding of the moon. This information can be on can be used to understand how the lunar surface can be eventuish for underground bases in the future. It can also contribute to surface bases and scientific experiments that can rely on the, on the heat being released as an alternative power source. The solar wind spectrometer measures the energy, density, and direction of travel of solar wind. This experiment will give astronauts a method of studying the general properties of solar wind and its interaction with the moon at the lunar surface. The charged particle lunar environment experiment can provide data on the energy distribution of solar particles and their effect on the Earth moon system. This experiment can be used to measure the particle energies of solar protons and electrons that reach the lunar surface. The Moto Optimized Vibration Dust Eliminator, or MOVE, is an active dust mitigation system for thermal radiators that uses vibrational excitation at targeted motor frequencies in order to mitigate dust adhesion with the assistance of passive dust mitigation coatings. The Lunar Active Seismic Experiment can determine the detailed structure of the lunar crust using seismic waves measured by a network of geophones. This experiment can be used to evaluate the lunar surface for future large-scale construction. The lunar dust detector can be used to measure high-energy radiation damage to solar cells, reduced solar cell output due to dust accumulation, and reflected infrared to compute lunar surface temperatures. This experiment will give astronauts a way to monitor the long-term degradation of solar cells from radiation and thermal effects. Conducting this collection of experiments in the lunar environment would contribute to the scientific return of the mission as they each serve a specific purpose towards the mission success. The XEMU EVA suit is NASA's in-house upgrade to the previous EVA suit, the EMU. The EMU has an EVA time of nine hours and a full upper and lower toe surf movement, which in turn removes the bunny hopping issue that astronauts normally face while on the moon. The way astronauts enter the suit has been changed to a new rear entry system, and the entire suit has been changed to a new modular design that allows for in-flight maintenance and component upgrades. Along with all of these new changes, the new technology has been added to the suit, allowing for high-speed transmissions of audio and video from the suit. All of these changes together should allow for the XEMU to be traveled further in and work for longer hours than its predecessor. Introducing In-Situ Research Utilization, or ISRU. Artemis 6 will include a rover concept capable of carrying and deploying a scientific payload. Picture below is the system's architecture of an integrated rover body. There are two radio frequency demonstrators and an ISRU demonstrator stowed as payload. Four scientific experiments consisting of two spectrometers, a rocket abrasion tool, and a microscopic camera are also carried. Its primary objectives are set to initiate and complete within one lunar day. It is designed to test the feasibility of in situ utilization of a lunar regolith. About 4,200 grams will be collected. The ovens of the ISRUD will heat up the regolith for chemical analysis and elemental composition detection. In further commercial contracting, Paragon and Griner announced a system of ISRU-derived water purification and hydrogen oxygen production, or the IHOP. Artemis 6 will focus on the first implementations of combining critical ISRU functions. IHOP is designed to derive water from the ice caps found in permanently shattered regions of the lunar poles. It processes and purifies the water of corrosive and volatile contaminants, then electrolyzes the water to generate hydrogen and oxygen for propellant. Optimal use of such outputs can be seen in fuel cells, crew atmosphere revitalization, and crew portable water. Artemis 6 will include commercially contracted lunar terrain vehicles, or LTV, to provide astronaut mobility and payload services for added range and efficiency of experiments. Picture below is a rendition of the announced partnership of Lockheed Martin General Motors and Goodyear, to which they collaborated on creating a lunar terrain vehicle capable of using natural feature tracking such as seen in the asteroid mission OSIRIS-REx. Some design concepts of the LTV, as released by GM, include Ultium Battery and Ultium Motors. This mission will also proceed with the beginning stages of the surface habitation, or the SH. It will embody self-sufficient power generation and storage, ECLSS, as well as the inclusion of surface, orbital, and communication assets. Within its early stages, it is proposed to hold two crew members on a one-month exclusion. However, it could be developed to twice the housing period and occupancy. It will consist of a vertical two-story construction, which encapsulates a metallic core and a lower hatch for EVA operations. Its boundary layers are made up of environmentally resistant layers, MMOD, and MIL. The ECLS, or the, environment control, the Environmental Control and Life Support System, is, is the water and oxygen filtration system aboard the ISS that allows the reuse of water by filtering it to a state where it's clean enough to drink again. Since the ECLSS has proven to be a useful resource on the ISS, 
and has been proven to work for up to 14 astronauts at once, we believe that this system would be a great fit for the gateway. Waste buildup on the gateway is a prevalent issue because normal procedure is just to send it into Earth's atmosphere and burn it up. However, since Earth is too far away, there really is no way to get rid of the astronauts' waste. As a solution, however, a biomass generator can be added to the gateway in order to work a, around this issue. Waste is put into a combustion chamber where it burns up and heats water up, which in turn turns a turbine with the intent to create power. Electricity produced by this can be used on the gateway for other systems. The scientific game. We hope to gain a chance to study the geology of the moon's surface to reveal any hotspots that correlate to the research to Mars. Moreover, we wish to see the limitations of our crew, given the fact that half of them will be on lunar orbit for several months, testing new modules to see what we can provide and improve on. The return. The Meta Team Gateway plans for returning to Earth is by translunar injection from the Gateway. The crew will power on the Orion and inject from the docking ports, then use engine bursts to put them on the correct path back to Earth. Throughout this time, the Orion will continue to make small adjustment burns to the trajectory to ensure that the crew has a safe trip back to Earth. It will enter the Earth's upper atmosphere using the atmosphere and lift of the crew module to bounce out of the atmosphere and finally descend. Since it will be traveling at speeds roughly 20,000 miles an hour, the Orion will, so will make a rotation that will put the nose of the Orion in upper position. This will enable some drag, which will allow us to deploy the parachutes, slowing down the Orion from 20,000 miles an hour to roughly 20 to 30 miles an hour for splashdown. Waiting at their landing spot will be a naval ship that will take them home safely. After completing the SEAS internship, we found the obstacle we faced the most throughout our mission planning was maneuvering between feasible and unattainable concepts. Because the Artemis missions are currently ongoing, many of our requirements are still under development and testing by NASA and commercial contracts. So we had to essentially meet in the middle for Artemis goals and executional milestones. In impactful takeaways, the SEAS project benefited our team profile because we all applied under interest in aerospace or mechanical engineering. Working together gave us exposure to the different aspects of mission requirements and subsystems. The SEAS internship helped sharpen our perspectives on collaboration and future career interests. We from Artemis would all like to give a special thanks to the SEAS program, Texas Space Grant Consortium, the Center for Space Research, and NASA for allowing us to be part of this wonderful opportunity. And we would also like to give a special thanks to our mentor, Mr. Petty.